Minecraft has always had a lack of democracy, and that is unacceptable. Luckily, as of recently though, Mojang has finally come to the realization that they cannot continue with their dictatorship. With the addition of the voting update, players now had the power to change the game through democratic process. So me and Space Fishy set out to do just that. It was after I had shown Space Fishy who was boss and a um, small retaliation by him that we got our very first vote proposals. Stuff was about to start getting weird. All right, and there's our proposals. <laughs> Every mob could be milked. Oh, uh, crap, you better vote fun. yes on that. I want to milk you. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Besides those um, first two questionable votes, we also made Enderman know how to place blocks correctly, whatever that meant. We changed the pitch of all sounds by 146%. We kept ignoring Mabo, whoever that was. And finally, we both voted for the big romantic moon. That last one did warn of unintended side effects, but as the good Americans we were, we voted for everything now and decided we would handle the consequences later. Me and Space Fishy ran off into the desert and soon realized it was an incredibly crappy place to be. The only chances of us getting resources was finding a village, so that's what we set out to do. Doing just that didn't take long though, and I gathered some resources at the village. I also went a little outside the village to go collect more resources, and it was as I was out here I began to notice the very first consequences of our voting decisions. Um, why are we moving? Excuse me? I don't me? like this. Oh, it's because of the big moon, the gravitational pull. Oh, the pull gravity is pulling us in? The sun is setting, dude. What happens when nighttime? Dude, we're gonna get sucked into the air. Uh, let's try and not fly away because we're gonna still need resources. Get over to the village quick. Is it still full? <laughs> Wait, I just want to see. Let's Goodbye. get over here. Is it gonna make us levitate? <laughs> Eventually, like once we reach midnight. If it is, we need to sleep through the night immediately. Nah, screw sleeping. Get back Wait, here. Wait, I'm, I'm gonna go milk a cat real quick. It turned out at midnight, it actually didn't drag us out of the atmosphere, which in my opinion was a good thing. But it did manage to stop all fall damage, which was kind of cool. From this, I'm... I mean, your spawn's right here. I didn't take fall See? damage. See? I told you. I told you. You didn't oh, believe me. Oh my goodness gracious. That's actually me. fun. <laughs> I can't wait to milk the warden. After the night had passed, it was more standard Minecraft gameplay. Running around, exploring, voting for things that we didn't even understand, and gathering resources. We made our way to a jungle where we somehow became midgets. And it looked pretty dang funny when we were riding in the boat. After we were done exploring, we decided it was about time we went down underground to gather more resources and also build a nether portal. In the time it took us to get down underground though, we had voted for plenty of things and it was getting very fudged up very quickly. Me and Space Fishy also both decided that the votes were just coming through too slowly, so I got operator permissions and started spamming them. I then used flint and steel, which could now blow up any block to go mine for some diamonds and actually got quite a few. We also both somehow became floating heads. Once we both had diamond tools, I knew it was time for us to go take on the nether, which definitely could not go wrong in any way. I mean, it's not like we voted for something that would make the nether more dangerous or anything outlandish like that. We found a bastion, which gave us some cool stuff like a pig step CD, but nothing else too interesting. It was after I left the bastion that I came across my first funny guy. I wasn't too worried about it though because I still had that super speed buff and regeneration buff which would help keep me alive. The regeneration buff was actually enough to keep me alive even while fully submerged in lava, so that was a very powerful asset. When me and Space Fishy came to the realization that we were practically unkillable, we decided it would be safe if we both split up and went our separate ways to go find another fortress. Little did we know, the wardens had other plans. Oh, hello! Hello, Warden! So, I am running through the red ah. biome, there's so many- Oh! Oh, it no! Oh, no! They got through the portal! They got through the portal! Oh, no! And there's like a million of them all by me. I had no clue they could kill us. Now I'm actually worried. As I had mentioned, we had just figured out that the Wardens could actually kill you, even with the regeneration buff. I was now legitimately afraid and frantically running for my life. I managed to get away though and swim over to a bastion where hopefully I would be safer. It was this moment though that helped me realize that running through the bottom of the nether probably was not a good idea. So I came up with a plan that I thought might work. I thought that because flint and steel supposedly could ignite every block in the game, then maybe, just maybe, it could ignite bedrock too. Then I could run across the roof of the nether and hopefully eventually drop down to find a fortress. Okay, here we go. I reached the nether roof. Now let's test this. It works! Really? Yep. 
lucky. I have no idea why it never crossed my mind that I might get blown up by this, but well, that happened. Me and Space Fishy were back to the beginning with no resources and no ideas on how to get them. We both agreed that it would be best to just return to the surface and try and begin anew. I did find some diamonds on the way back up though, and inexplicably, they dropped more than they were supposed to. After I was done mining, me and Space Fishy rendezvoused at the surface where we realized we had both become floating heads with capes. It was in our sad state of semi-transparent heads that we realized we needed a new plan, something else to work for. So we made like NASA in the mid-1900s and decided to go to the moon. We began by collecting sand to make glass bottles, and glass bottles to make air blocks. We were going to use these air blocks to make a cow rocket and go to the moon. How that worked? Well, you'll just have to stick around to find out. During this process, somehow the world became very shiny, and we also became French at one point, which if you ask me is a fate worse than death, but in the end it all worked out. Why are you French? Wait, French oh, mode was a thing we had. Oh no. Oh, lay. Not France. Everything's in French. After only a short amount of waiting, we had finally gathered enough air to make a cow rocket and go to the moon. We went off in search of cows and found some in a nearby savanna biome. All right, you know what? That looks good. Please work, please work, please work. Yes, it worked. <laughs> All right, I'll be We're... there in a minute. Bro, it was just a big old fart cloud, apparently, <laughs> when you sit up here. <laughs> yes, uh... I'm going to the moon. I had finally done what cryptocurrency could not, and made it to the surface of the moon. Sadly though, this victory was incredibly short-lived. It turns out that the combined power of my super jumps in the low gravity is actually enough to send me out of the moon's gravitational pull and back to Earth's. That meant all the work I had done had just been cancelled out by that one jump, and I was immediately heading back to Earth like Master Chief in Halo 3. This wasn't too crippling though, as Space Fishy still had some extra air on him, and it should have been enough for us both to get to the moon. Well, in theory it was enough to get us both there, we actually had two failed long launch attempts that meant neither of us were able to make it, so we had to go back to gather more air. After that I found another cow in seconds and was back on my way to the moon. Yes, please! And by the way, it looks like you need like 10 air to get it going. So oh, that's okay. what I... Yes! Woohoo! We're going, baby! I had learned my lesson and this time I was careful never to jump. At first it seemed like it was going to be a massive handicap, but then I realized there was an easy way around it. By eating the edges of the moon cheese block, I could turn it into a little staircase that would allow me to ascend it without ever jumping once. A genius strategy. And so began my trek across the moon. After what seemed to be an eternity of running across the moon, I finally came across the lunar rover and was ready to start the base building. Space Fishy got there too and we activated it together. Yes, yes, we got it! Let's go! No, is it gonna do it? Oh, oh, there we go! Let's step back and get the full view of this. It's such a weird animation, how the heck did they do that? Why do they always wait till April Fools to make the best updates? I know, for real. Like this is this is the best feature of the game. Prove me wrong. If Dang. I relax, little buddies. There we go. There is the moon base. As it turns out, though, there's actually not a lot you can do on the moon. So I decided maybe it would be best to return home. I climbed to the top of the trusses in the lunar base and jumped, sending myself hurtling all the way back to Earth. And with that, I had done it. I had made it to the moon and somewhat successfully managed to conquer the voting update, and thus ended my adventure in this very bizarre version of the game.